Hi everybody. <laughs> I hope you're ready and I hope some of you are painting along. That would be wonderful. And George is in the background. He says hello. <laughs> hello. Hi everybody. So what we're going to do today is paint a cardinal in the summertime. I have one on the channel with a cardinal uh, in a winter scene. So this time it's going to be summertime. And um, I'm going to leave this up when we're done. For those who are just hopping in, hopping on, and don't know me, I'm Angela Green. And the channel used to be called Painting with Fibromyalgia. But just to keep things consistent, um, I am now calling it Angela Green uh, Paint and Chat <laughs> Live live paint and chat so it makes more sense um, for those uh, who are in the groups I have two groups on Facebook painting with fibromyalgia and everything art so it's more inclusive and it includes all of you who are visiting that are not on Facebook at all so that's why I renamed uh, um, our channel but this is still the same channel it's still the same one that I use um, for our groups and it's the same one that I use for uh, those who suffer from any kind of chronic pain or fatigue and need to paint to feel a little bit better emotionally and physically and it kind of is a distraction and also um, I gear my painting towards those who um, just like to take their time and probably tire a little bit easily uh, when following other uh, tutorials. So we try to take breaks, um, get up, use the bathroom, go get something to drink, so forth and so on. Now I've been cheating lately and using the blow dryer, but what I like to do is not use the blow dryer and when it's time for the paint to dry, I, I hop back on this um, scene right now where it's just me and just say hi and talk to you. Now I'm not facing my computer screen so you're gonna see the side of my head and I'm gonna turn right now and say hi. Let's see who's here. Oh my goodness, a whole bunch of you were here. <laughs> a minute ago it was just Tina by herself. Boy, what a nice surprise. Hi Ian and Jennifer, Trish, Leanne, Gina, um, wait, Anita. <laughs> Uh, everybody says hi, honey. And Hello. let's see, Cheryl. Oh my goodness. And Diana. Oh my goodness. Everybody is here. You might just need to turn your your tablet sideways or whichever way. Oh, just oh, I don't know. Refresh. I don't know. George doesn't see everybody. And Tina Blaylock. And oh my goodness. And um, I know who you are. <laughs> wait, wait. Um. You are um, deliberately, oh, you know who you are. Say say your name. <laughs> Wait, I know exactly who you are. Oh, my goodness. Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> okay, I did okay. I got an um, A minus. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so it's good seeing everybody. What we're going to do is paint this little... Uh, I have a 9 by 14 and I turned it vertically and I started it with yellow ochre so which was just a second ago because I was running a little late <laughs> and now I'm going to put a little background on there um, paint some leaves a tree and eventually uh, what looks like a birdhouse but it's kind of a bird feeder which is my new thing lately, watching the birds feed at the bird feeder. Nobody told me how much fun that was. And um, at our house, on our bird feeder stand, um, I look out the window and I'll see a bright male cardinal perched right on top. So I was going to call this, uh, this live um what is that called rule the roost who rules the roost and it's mr cardinal but it just sounded too complicated so but that's that's kind of what i'm going to concentrate on is our cardinal who rules the roost here in our front yard okay and and his mate and she comes out every now and then i had to google her because i wasn't sure 
um, I was looking at a cardinal because she looks so different, more than just a little doll, really different. And I'm gonna do a sound check, hang on. Okay, let's see. Oh boy, everybody's been talking, talking, talking. And I miss so much and I can't pay attention. Okay. All right, sound check, everyone. Sounds good. Okay, thanks. You guys know the drill around here. So I'm going to mix up some blues and um, sorry for my head or disappearing. I'm going to mix up some blues. Doesn't matter what kind, really. I'm going to mix a few blues and make um, some... Um, leaves in the background. I think I'm going to use some, um, well first I'm going to do a little sky. So I'm going to use a little manganese blue hue and paint my sky. And let me see, let me turn over to, I'm going to turn over to the canvas. Let me get it on here. Okay, so let me see where we are here. There we are. So that's a little manganese blue hue. That's pretty bright. And I'm going to put some um, white on there, of course. Titanium white. Under the description, I just put a combination of blues because it's basically whatever you have. A lot of it's gonna be covered up with the subjects I have on here, the birdhouse and the leaves and the cardinal. So it really doesn't much matter. I just put a little bit of um, manganese blue hue on there and there was already a little yellow ochre on my brush, which was fine because it really muted it down, okay? I'm gonna get a little more white so I can have enough. Okay, so I'm just gonna do, kind of paint the sky. That yellow ochre underneath um, really helps to bring out the sky a little bit, bring out whatever you put on top. It tends to make it look a little bit more uh, brilliant so jump out at you some more than it would have if you just painted over the um, canvas and also I don't know if you guys have experienced this and I think part of it is whatever they treat the canvas with but sometimes you see those little dots of see-through where you see through your paint um, and it's like little sparkles almost. Well, that really bugs me. So this kind of keeps that from happening too. A little bit more white. I'm gonna dip in the yellow. And I'm thinking you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm being kind of messy, which is okay. As long as I don't get it on me, because you know, those of you who know me know I don't like getting stuff on myself. I'm a little weird that way and then I just heard I'm not by myself I was feeling all alone in that is my sound still okay because I'm not really facing you anymore and George can't tell how the sound is because he he would be playing it um, it would be coming out loud here and it would be very uh, annoying so okay so I'm bringing the sky way down here. I'm gonna add some yellow. Let's see the sound sounds good. Okay. I think I'm gonna add some more um, yellow ochre into this blue and then gradually change the color down here. Mute it down a little bit. So it's 
a little greenish from the yellow, but not very. I mean, from the blue and the yellow mix. Okay, so this will be my first greens I'm adding. Going kind of fast. You know what, guys? It has been so long since I actually sat at the easel. It has been one crazy couple of weeks. And here we are in the middle of July. I mean, I can't believe it. I don't know if anybody else feels like you, like I do, but I feel like I've been kind of cheated out of summer just from being too busy. So anyways, it's kind of nice to sit at the easel because I feel like I'm kind of um, doing my thing now instead of just chasing my tail, so to speak. Okay. Anyway, so this is kind of just an undercolor here before we start adding more things. And you know what I'm missing is my, am I missing my yellow? that um those oh there they are i i have still have some stuff packed up from the festival so honey if you could grab me that if you could you know what i'm talking about on the table that would be very helpful i'm gonna flip this whole thing over and work at it upside down for a sec Just get some of these bottom colors on here. Still kind of greenish. And it is not um, the same greens. And I have a little bit of movement in here because that's what I like. Okay. So very loose. This is very loose. All right, so I just wanted to get started here. I didn't want this to run too, too late. And then I'm gonna let that dry for a second. And then we'll be adding some leaves. All right. Uh, I have this and I have my brushes. Okay, yeah, I still have my stuff packed up. It's like I'm unpacking from a vacation. Yeah, so how did the art festival go? The art festival went really, really well, Ian. I don't know, it's hard to explain because, you know, uh, you think in terms of, well, I don't because I don't like uh, feeling uh, any kind of letdown from whatever I enter. So I intentionally don't build myself up like I'm going to sell a lot of stuff or get any kind of awards or anything like that. So I don't really go into anything with any expectations. However, what I did learn from it um, was a bit of a surprise to me too because I got so much more out of it than those obvious couple of things that I mentioned. For example, um, I met a lot of really nice people um, the feedback that I got from my art was very positive and so um, you know it just feels good when you kind of feel uh, a positive feedback it makes you feel a little bit more um, secure about your artwork you know sometimes I go back and forth usually I don't I'm okay once I I present my artwork I'm okay with it and then sometimes I um, I'm like, I don't know, is it is it any good? You know, so sometimes I go back and forth every once in a while. So a festival kind of like, um, it kind of makes your, it kind of builds your self-esteem and builds your, uh, makes you more secure um, with your art because you're getting feedback and it's face-to-face -face and you know that those that are really like your art or, you um, uh, get something out of your art they are standing there and they're looking at it and they're commenting on it and if they don't like your art then they're walking past so whatever feedback you're getting you feel like is honest feedback 
Whereas um, online, the feedback you're getting, some of it is honest feedback and some of it is, I don't want to make you feel bad or else you think that's what it is. So face-to-face -to, -face to me, is a, it's a very healthy kind of um, uh, exchange or inter interchange. Um, the other thing is um, people are really wanting to know who you are in this community. Who is this person that they've never be met before? And I really didn't think about it, that there are people who, who seriously follow art and they seriously want to know who you are and what your art is about and are you going to be in another festival and i even had one ask me to join their festival that was coming up this month even though i really couldn't i really didn't have the time um to do that so um i i got a lot out of it and i had a lot of fun and i had the best helper in the world uh i thought of asking this young lady who's a freshman in, in college and um, took a lot of art in high school. Um, she's not going into art in college, but she really, really enjoyed um, being at the festival and being with me and passing out my business cards and my samples and, and, and so forth and so on. So she really enjoyed that. So she's inspired to pick up her brushes even while she's at school and start painting again. So she's probably going to take her, her paint stuff with her. So I love inspiring people. And um, I had little children playing at the chalkboard. And then toward the end, the teenagers are drawing on the street with the uh, sidewalk chalk. So I just feeling like I'm inspiring people to stop and pay attention and notice the art all of that so that's all the stuff i got out of it um and then what to do the next time because i forgot all about selling and business i mean i really i didn't forget about it but i put that down on the bottom of the list of priorities um it might not be the most important thing but it shouldn't be on the bottom <laughs> so so since then i actually figured out how to work my card reader and that kind of stuff so the next time i'm more prepared in the morning when the serious collectors come through. So that's my that's my five minute spiel on, on that. But thanks for asking. I suggest everyone try it. it, it you get a lot out of it. All right, so um, now everything's dry, I believe, dry enough for me to um, scooch back and get my brushes. Dry enough for, for us to add some leaves and a tree. So I'm getting my um, trusty angle brushes out. I don't know, I think some of, some of my stuff's getting lost. I'm gonna have to go hunting for all my brushes and things. But anyway, I'm adding um, some more, I'm gonna add some phthalo blue here on the palette. And I don't want to let too much time go by because I like to keep my uh, videos or my lives down to um, an hour and no more. So that's why sometimes I rush because I know that a lot of people that follow us on this channel um, don't really have the stamina to, to stay with it for so long. So, so that's why I do that. I'm dipping into my... Um, my phthalo blue and my uh, cad yellow and a little bit of my yellow ochre tone it down and I'm going to be adding some leaves here so um, this is going to be a very loose painting so I'm just smashing and just adding leaves just smashing my angle brush giving it a little twist and just adding some leaves here. Okay, coming down, going up here. <clears throat> I think I'll, uh, let's see, I'll come from this angle to go the same direction and just add some leaves here. And then come down this direction just be very, very loose and light. Very loose and light. 
Okay, and then I like to change colors a little bit, give it a little, I put a little yellow ochre and some cad yellow, and I wanna add a little bit more color in here. So on those leaves, on the edge, I'm just adding a little bit of uh, my cad yellow and yellow ochre so that it's not so, um, uh, what is it, mono, mono, whatever. I can never think of that word, but you know what I'm talking about. Not all one color. Okay, so I added some yellow and I'm gonna lighten up toward the middle and add even a lighter version with my dirty brush of some yellow so that the sun is coming from the middle. And then when I add my um, bird and everything, it's not on that dark color and it'll come out a little bit better. So there's my tree and I'm going to add a darker color in order to make my um, branches to my tree. And they're gonna be coming from across the top. They're not really going to look like a tree. We're not gonna see the trunk of the tree, okay? So, and I'm not looking at a reference now. I looked at a reference earlier. Um, I don't feel like being tied to a reference now. I just feel I'm in the mood to be very loose with it, okay? So, just gonna make some branches with my angle brush. Who's painting? Is anybody painting along? I'll get a little water so it's not so scratchy. Anybody painting along? I don't know. I have to do these, do a treatment on this brush. Babe, are you like, cause I can't see answers to questions. Okay. Is anybody answering me? Or did you go to sleep? <laughs> I was talking to my daughter. Oh. I was asking if anybody's painting along. I think you went to sleep. I know. <laughs> okay. All right. So if anybody has any questions, that's really what I'm getting to. Um, feel free to answer the questions. I'm just uh, doing kind of a, but well, this brush, I think this, obviously I used this brush at the, uh, at the festival because it's not cooperating. There we go. So I'm putting some lines here. I don't like that. Get something else here. Cheryl McKenzie says she is. She's painting along? Yay! So if you have any questions, Cheryl, just let me know. I'm just putting some lines here to represent the tree, um, some branches. Not really, uh, and I'm gonna go a little heavy on some of them to show you know, that the tree is more on this side. <clears throat> okay. All right, so that's kind of it. It's kind of an impressionistic painting, not really connecting anything. Okay, then I'm going back to my <clears throat> really dark color because I, I mixed it earlier for the tree and making some oh, let me lighten it up a little bit that was too dark just playing around you know just changing up trying to make a variation in colors here okay okay I kind of like that now, what I'm gonna do here now is, rinse my brushes out for one thing. I'd like to put- I think Gina's painting. Oh, is Gina painting too? I think so. 
Yay! I have I have a Deerfoot stippler, but if you don't, you don't have to use use a Deerfoot slip uh, stippler. You could use a bright or a flat brush and just use the edges. But what I'd like to do here is I'm dabbing into the yellow mostly and a touch of the more greenish color. And what I'm going to do is uh, make my make my grasses. I'm just going to barely go down on it. But you could do that. You could also do that with a uh, with a flat brush or a bright brush, just the regular squarish looking brushes. If you're not used to painting, I'm um, just trying to describe the brush. You could use a brush that looks like this and do the same thing you could dab don't get it too wet or you won't see the bristle you won't see the bristle marks um but you could kind of do the same thing just kind of dab with the edges of it so you see how you could do the same thing just a very light where you pull up on it quickly actually i like this one better you pull up quickly and then you'll see the little brush strokes. Does anybody have questions? Okay. You could do the same thing with this, okay? Um, right now I'm using my Deerfoot Stippler. I actually liked it better. I think I'm gonna switch over to the flat. I actually liked it better with the flat brush. And just don't get it real wet because if you get it real wet it won't um, show the brush marks and that's what you want you want it to be um, rough you don't want it to be smooth okay you want to go up in here a little bit but you want it to be more smooth as you get toward the back because as you get toward the back, you're not gonna see the detail, okay? But at the in the very front, you want it to be, and so you see my cat yellow, that's, that's more showing up. I mix my colors together as I paint, and the cat yellow is more dominant in my, uh, what's on my brush than the greenish color, okay? But it does have some green in it. So I'm going to dip again, and I'm going to mix it so it's not all cat yellow. And I'm going to make some more very rough, very rough marks on here. Can you see? I don't know if you could see. Let me bring it a little closer. Honey, if they're saying anything at all so I could make some adjustments, let me know. Otherwise, I have no idea, and I can't make adjustments. Did you use burnt and umber in the darkening? That's yes, I did use some burnt umber. Yes, I used some burnt umber when I darkened my green, and I used uh, like all burnt umber when I made my little marks for my uh, tree branches. And that looks too far away for me. Um, let me see if you could see it. Yeah, it does. I don't like the way this looks, so I am going to quickly make a transition here. All right, that's about as good as I can get it. And it is, you know what, it is muted. It really is muted in real life. So. And this part as we go up is not gonna be as grassy looking the as the bottom part. about halfway up with the dabs. Okay, halfway up I just painted across. I painted from the bottom to the top, above halfway up, like uh, not not quite two thirds. And then when I do the dabs, I do the dabs about half of the green. I do the dabs about half of the green. And then the rest of it, I intentionally make it a little bit more. You see I'm going more swirly with the rest of it so that it's not quite so uh, 
grassy looking. Um, what my brush wet it a little bit. But so with the rest of it, I, I still put mix my cad yellow with my more greenish color. And it's not quite so uh whoop, not quite as as dab as a uh, grassy looking as the bottom part. The bottom part I have more dabs because it's more close to you and it's more defined. Whereas you get more far away, you're not gonna see that definition. I hope I explain that. I hope I explain that okay. Did that answer your question or am I kind of off on your, okay? So right here is where it's kind of a very muted green where I use the yellow ochre combination with the, uh, with the blue. Very, and uh, it had a little blue in it and a little white in it and yellow ochre. And I went from the top all the way to the bottom. Then when I got to, uh, when I got done with that, then I took my little dabs, which I'm not really done with, and I mixed my cad yellow, mostly cad yellow, with the green that I had. And that's where I'm putting in my little dabs. Now, I'm going to flip it upside down so you can probably see it better. And you see where the part that's, I put it upside down, but you see the parts that's closer to you, which would be this one is in the right direction, has more of a grassy look. That's more of a grassy look. So now I'm going back with some of my greens and just making my little dabs on the bottom because I was too close to my easel to do that before. So I'm just kind of filling in some of my spaces here, okay, with my dabs on the bottom. I'm going to get this little bit of cad yellow and kind of do the same thing see my little it looks like little fork marks so that's what I want I want those brush marks to show and I want to um, come off the canvas with it so I'm just flicking it upside down I'm flicking it up now instead of down whoop Flicking it right off the canvas onto whatever is behind the canvas. So thank goodness I have that protected. Okay, so just, that's it. So that's what I did. Okay, now, so that's my grass. That's my grass, and I'm just kind of like blending it in a little bit so that it's not so, so, uh, uh, detailed toward the top okay and then that back part that's really muted I'm leaving it like that okay because that's really in the background okay all right so now that still looks a little strange but we're gonna be okay because what we're gonna do now is put the birdhouse in there and that's gonna take up some space so I'm gonna put my burnt umber on the palette right here, okay? And I'm gonna put a little um, titanium white in there because when you mix the titanium white uh, with some of that burnt umber, you'll get the variation in the wood color. So I'll put a little titanium white on the palette. And any more questions? Because I can't see. I'm going to take a piece of chalk. Bonnie Green says back. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, she must have left, so she's back. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I need a piece of chalk that's going to show up. So I'm going to use a little piece of purple chalk here. You know, you could use white chalk if you could see, but I want you guys to be able to see mine. I'm going to take a little sip of uh, of my iced coffee. Cheryl said, yes, thanks. That's what I needed, baby. Because <laughs> I asked if that made any sense. Okay. So now, 
what I'd like to do here is use this as like a straight edge. You can use anything. You can use your T-square, whatever. Um, I'm not that picky. But anyway, now I'm going to make my little um, birdhouse. So, well, actually, I want to, uh, I don't want to go directly in the middle with it. I'm going to come out here with it a little bit, this direction, and I'm going to make the pole. I don't know, me in straight lines. It might not be the straightest thing in the world, but I'm making the pole right there, okay? And then I'm going to make the birdhouse come off the pole. So I'm just going to do like, like this and like that, okay? Well, I just want a one side birdhouse, duh. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do like this. Okay, so that's kind of my, not birdhouse, bird feeder, bird feeder. So you see my little bird feeder is gonna be there and I'm gonna put a little thing here and I'm gonna make my bird feeder like that. I'm gonna come down, go across. Okay, so that's my bird feeder. Okay, and everybody's gonna know it's a bird feeder because it's on a stand and then it's outside. Okay? <laughs> but that's my bird feeder. Okay, and then I'm gonna make my cardinal on here. So my cardinal is going to be Actually, I should have made my bird feeder and stuff bigger. But anyway, my cardinal is going to be here. So I'm going to make my cardinal here. My bird feeder needs to be bigger. Sorry, guys. All of that needs to be a little bigger. Because I don't want my cardinal to be huge. Okay. It's going to make this bigger, too. So my pole's going to be bigger. My bird feeders, feeder's going to be bigger. There we go. So now my cardinal could be a little big, bigger. And there's my cardinal. Okay. And we're going to fill that in. So what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to put a little black on my palette for my pole. And then I have my, what am I doing on time? 46. I have my uh, burnt umber. I'm going to touch some white in it so it's not so brown. Elena likes the leaves. She likes that? I love doing leaves, they're fun. And I'm gonna come down here and do my bird feeder. Okay. And then I'm gonna um, come out a little bit. I'm gonna whiten it even more and come out a little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna darken it. I'm gonna go into the darker burnt umber. I'm gonna wipe my brush off. And then we're going to go into the darker color. And then that's where I'm going to put my... This has like a little curve up. You can make your bird feeder like you want to make it. But anyway, that's mine. Very simple. Oops. Very simple. Well, you know, it's going to be one of those you keep correcting it. It's going to get bigger and bigger. <laughs> but that's my bird feeder right there. Beautiful my brushes, like I really need to work on my brushes. They're so separated. This is so separated that it's defeating the purpose. Anyway, so put some little streaks in that birdhouse, bird feeder. I need to come over this way a little bit. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go across that little bottom part with it. So that's the bird feeder. Okay. All right, that was fun. Now I'm gonna go into my black, dirty brush and all. I don't want it to be too black, 
So I'm like going into my brownish a little bit. And I'm just gonna come down and get this pole. I'll just come down like that. Okay, and then the pole has like a little tip to it. Okay, and then it comes down like this. Okay. When I stop, it says it's beautiful. You like that? I'm really mad at my angle brush. Well, I'm mad at myself because I didn't treat it any better. <laughs> oh, my poor angle brush is, um, it got the bums rush at the festival because I, I did a little touch-ups at, at the festival. And, um, and my poor angle brush um, is, has suffered as a result. And um, and the poor thing there. So now I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that. Um, brown this up a little. I'm gonna get that uh, bird in there. Okay. So I'm gonna start with my quinacridone magenta, even though I didn't tell you that. You don't have to, but I'm gonna start with my quinacridone magenta. You could start with your red your regular red, whatever that's called, Alzerian red, or Cad red, or whatever. And at some point, I'm gonna add a yellowish color to it too. But anyway, this is my, my cardinal. So like I said, we're not gonna get too, too, too um, crazy with it because we didn't get crazy with the leaf part, so we don't have to get crazy with the rest of it. So I got the cardinal here. Okay. I need a more detailed brush. I'm picking up stuff with my toes. Oh, that's not gonna work either. Let's see. I need a better brush. Oh. Hey guys, you know what? I ordered something to clean my brushes and I don't know if it's going to work or not. <laughs> Let me know if you know of anybody that did this. But you know there's this brush thing on QVC and um, it's for makeup brushes. It's a brush cleaner for makeup brushes. I forget what it's called. It starts on the end though. Um, all right. So now I'm going to go into my black. Anyway, it has a thing, kind of like for toothbrushes, you know that thing that makes them spin around? Um, I'm gonna make this little square on his face. See, a little square right there, okay? And with that square, I'm gonna let that dry. And then I'm going to, uh, whoop. I'll let that square dry. Wipe my brush off. Bonnie, Bonnie's, Bonnie Stockton's liking your painting. She is? I forgot his little, his little thing. He's like, okay. I'm gonna come down here. Now I'm gonna go into my cad red, wherever that is. Ugh. Get my cad red out of here. Put that on my palette. I'm gonna get his belly. With my cad red. There we go. And 
then I'm going to throw a little bit of yellow on there. Where's my yellow? How do I lose paint like when I don't go anywhere? How do I do that? I haven't left. <laughs> I found it. I'm gonna put some yellow on there on the, a little just a little swish of yellow on his belly. Just a little swish. Just to give him a little color. Okay. Little color variation. And then I want to go back into my cat red because I like him being. Okay. All right. Now, so you see where the little black is on his face? You go into that black part. You don't just go on the outside tip of it. You go into the black part, and I'm gonna go into that with, I wiped off my brush, and I'm gonna go into it just for the beak, just barely into it, just like that, okay? Okay. I'm gonna go back into this. This is a very detailed, like, spot right here. Okay, and I know you might not be able to see it good. Bonnie and Vera said it looks like their bird feet are out their window. Does it? This is what I'm seeing out of my window, really. Okay, and I'm just going to in this, um, uh, into this uh, burnt umber a little bit, and I'm just going to define his, define his uh, wing with my burnt umber, the little bit that didn't dry up. Just to find this wing a little bit. And then come down and then get that red. Okay. So that's my little cardinal. It's not the it's not the most realistic little guy. I kind of got him a little too Bat at the top. Let me get under that black part. And let me get a little bit more of this. There we go. All right. So that's kind of it, guys. Really simple. Not realistic, like totally. But really simple, really fun. And I hope you liked it. So that's kind of it. You could do some touch-ups. You could make his little beak stand out a little bit better. I think I might. I might go to this little black and just make his beak just barely touch it there. And make it stand out a little bit better. There we go. I mean, that was like hit or miss right there. I'm glad I hit it. I'm glad I hit the beak. <laughs> All right. So that's him. And I'm going to bring him a little bit closer so you can see it better. Looks like I'm ending on time. You're liking it, Bonnie? This is my new thing. I hope, I'm trying to hold it closer because fooling with that. Um, I'm looking. I have a delay. So forgive me if I'm over too much but I'm trying to bring it closer to you Oop. let's see I went way over hang on I have a delay I see where I'm at hang on there we go Okay, so that's kind of him. And that's kind of my front window. <laughs> oh, 
that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. It's not the most realistic bird in the world. It wouldn't go in a bird uh, book. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Oh, goodness. All right, so I hope I didn't throw you guys off who were trying to follow me. If you have any questions and you want to touch it up later, just ask me on the group what to do. I'll give you some critique because I go a little fast and I'm all over the place. And... Uh, sometimes it's hard to explain all right so i'm going to switch over back to me back to all about me hang on let me move this over a little bit there we go all right let's see Let me see, there we go. Okay, all right. <laughs> I hope you guys like that. Wow, an hour went by. I thought I was gonna go over for sure because I, I saw where I was when it was 10 till and I don't even think I touched the bird yet. But I'm gonna look on here and it looks like a happy bird. I think he's happy. That's kind of how our bird looks out there. He just kind of lets everybody know who's boss around here. And his little wife comes and she comes on the bottom and looks for some bird seed. I don't know. I think I'll just leave him by himself. <laughs> oh. So everybody, you know what? Um, when you get on the group, add your names to that uh, to that post that I put on uh, painting with fibromyalgia. And if you're not on painting with fibromyalgia, make a post that you were on this live on Everything Art. I'll let Ian or whoever's in Everything Art uh, put make a post saying that you were at this live. Um, those of you who aren't in either group, Everything Art's for anyone. Painting with fibromyalgia are for people with chronic pain. So if you're not in any of those groups, join Everything Art on Facebook. And then if you do this painting, please post it, okay? Because I'm getting a little um, hungry for some of my paintings to be posted. <laughs> it makes me feel like I could keep going and do some more. So it, it motivates me when I see that people like to paint uh, from these tutorials on this channel. So, but anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm so happy to see so many of you have joined me. And um, let me know how you're doing if I see you somewhere else on Facebook or somewhere else, okay? All right, like, subscribe, um, comment, please. Give me some feedback in the comments when this is over with. Um, and then that way I'll be able to save it. All right, if I decide to go back and edit this or whatever, I'll see your comments in the comments. All right, see you later. Bye. Have a good day. Thanks.